evening. I'm Jean Casares in for Nancy Grace. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin tonight with the death of toddler Cooper Harris, left to die in a baking hot car in the parking lot by his father. As the investigation continues, we are learning tonight law enforcement is set to turn over that evidence to prosecutors. Joining us, investigative reporter Brett Larson. Brett, what do we know at this point? Uh, you know, it's it's still very tragic. As you mentioned there off the top, you know, he is sitting there without bond. He is uh, is waiting for more information. Now, the prosecutors are going actually back to that car, back to what they are calling the scene of the crime to try and recreate the events, to try and figure out what went wrong that day, to try and, and figure out if he in fact forgot that his son was in the car or if he intentionally left his son in that hot car on that incredibly hot day in Georgia. You know, Michael Christian, I, I think what we are seeing through Brett Larson's reporting is that there are actually two investigations going on right now. You've got the police department, Cobb County Police Department. You've also got the district attorney's office that is really doing their own investigation right now. And that's evident, Michael, because of that hot car that they put to, to launch their, their own experiment. That's right, Gene. In theory, the Cobb County Police Department is supposed to finish its investigation and then turn over what it's discovered to the DA's office, and then they'll conduct a separate independent one. But we know there's at least some concurrent stuff going on, because as you say, the DA's office investigators checked out, if you will, from the evidence locker, from the evidence pound, the car for one day from the Cobb County PD. They tested temperatures at various points through the day. They did some measurements in the car. Then they turned the car back to the Cobb County DA, excuse me, the Cobb County PD. So obviously there's at least, you know, some hint of both investigations going on at the same time. And once Cobb County PD signs off on this case, then the Cobb County DA's office will, will conduct a full independent investigation. And, and Michael, what is that timeline right now? Because this case is going to a grand jury. Yes, I'd be very surprised if it, if it doesn't. And here's the thing. From the time of Mr. Harris's arrest, he's got 90 days before a jury has to come back with an indictment before he can be guaranteed bond. Now, right now he's being held without bond. Uh, that expires after 90 days, and they have to offer him at least the hope of bond. So right now we're up on day 27. That means there are 63 days to go before we have to get an indictment or he'll be able to get out perhaps on bond. To Nanette Sosa, reporter with News Radio 106.7, you know, we're talking about the wife. At, the, at today, as these investigations continue, as this case proceeds to quite potentially the grand jury proceeding, where is the mother in all of this today? Deanna Harris, last I heard, was uh, headed and is in Alabama with her own mother. And as far as employment and work, that's up in the air. But last I heard is that she had headed over to uh, Alabama. She has hired uh, an attorney to help her out, Lawrence Zimmerman, who's very well versed, especially when it comes to computer forensics types of investigations. And that's as that's all we're pretty much hearing from Leanna Harris. So she is out of the jurisdiction. She is out of the state. To Kenya Johnson, prosecutor joining us from Georgia, right there in the heart of it. What do prosecutors need to charge her criminally with something? Well, to be a party to a crime, you can... Uh play a part in a case either before the incident occurred, during the commission of the crime, or even afterwards. So prosecutors will be looking at her activities afterward, before, and during. And particularly, she's made several comments that are very questionable. And so we'd be looking into, did she hide evidence? Did she research evidence? Did they talk about it? Did they plan it? Uh, and what her part was in the crime before we charge her. And, and right now, we believe that uh, the police department is going through computers and iPhones and cell phones and, and anything else that they can get the written word on or her communications or her state of mind. Uh, Robert McDonald, defense attorney, joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, right in the heart of it. Do you think that we don't know exactly what's going to happen in this case? Because everybody's wondering if she will be charged, but the investigation is what provides those answers. Yeah, I think it's it's too early to tell at this stage. And the state also, they have to be worried if they do indict her and she becomes co-defendant and then she uh, invokes her Fifth Amendment that they wouldn't be able to use her testimony against her husband. So they've got a, a balancing test that they're weighing. First, do they have enough evidence to uh, arrest her, which it doesn't appear that they do at this time. And second, if it's close, do they even want to go, go that route? To defense attorney Robert Schock, do you think that they are tracking her at all right now? Do you think that they are monitoring her? To to see if there are any leads that they can get that way? 
Oh, absolutely. She's going to leave a footprint, whether that be with the cell phones, Facebook, any social media accounts. They're going to want to compile as much evidence as they can against her. Because, again, as uh, the other attorneys noted, we don't know whether or not what their intentions are. Are they going to charge her? And if they do, are they going to lean on her to cooperate? Are they going to threaten prosecution with an eye towards cooperation? So they're absolutely interested in every step she takes and every word she utters. You know, Michael Christian, I want to know more about this defendant, Justin Ross Harris. I want to know his background. I want to know where has he worked, Michael Christian? He's had several jobs since he got out of high school in the late 90s. Um, he worked, interestingly, at a television station in Tuscaloosa, where he's from. But apparently after only two months, he was asked to resign. Now, all we know from their personnel records is, quote, he was told that he wasn't suitable for the job. Uh, he worked at Clear Channel Radio as a soundboard operator. He worked for a while at Coca-Cola, where he was a merchandiser. Um, in 2001, he began to work at the University of Alabama. He worked as a parking monitor there and also a mail delivery clerk. And then finally, and this is the most significant, from 2006 until 2009, he worked for the Tuscaloosa Police Department as a police dispatcher. So you'd think someone with um, police experience, especially dispatching experience, would have immediately called 911 when something went wrong on June 18th, but he didn't. All right, to Romani Dervasil, a clinical psychologist, if you work for, as a police dispatcher, you're getting, receiving, and communicating 911 calls, and you don't make a 911 call on your own son when you've had that experience? That takes us to a different the level. It does take us to a different level, and so many of the pieces in this case aren't adding up. Absolutely. He knows exactly how police dispatch works, and for him to not make that call is like a lot of the other oversights in this call. And again, Gene, there's one of two issues here. Even in the case of neglect here, so much of his conduct here, the, the, the text messaging and the other behaviors he's engaged in, we really have to wonder, was this deliberate? Was this, uh, was this neglect? And he had the background to know what to do. As a psychologist, it makes me very suspicious. Kenya Johnson, prosecutor, will that come into a trial, his past employment, if he does not take the stand? Absolutely. If it comes to where we want to show that he has a problem with commitment or sticking with goals or he's had issues at any of those jobs, we can absolutely have those witnesses come in to talk about some of the problems that he's had before. Uh, uh Brett Larson, we understand that tonight he is in the mental health ward of the jail. He's no bail. Yes. We know that. Why is he in the mental health ward? You know, that is actually the only part we know. He was moved to the mental health ward. They weren't saying exactly for why. But, you know, I, I wanted to mention again those, those Internet searches and these traps. I mean, these are going to be some very telling pieces of evidence. Everywhere we now go online is trackable and traceable. And this is going to be an interesting case because it's going to prove that a lot of us don't have as much privacy as we think we have. And the state of mind can definitely show intent. Uh, to Robert Schock, defense attorney, why is he being put in the mental health ward tonight as we speak? Um, I would think he would have been in protective custody from the beginning. Well, you, you, there's a too many things to speculate about here. He could be in the, the mental health ward because he's a threat to himself. Suicide, some other, you know, he could have mental health issues that we don't know about. Obviously, HIPAA laws are going to protect that information from being released. He also could be a, a, in danger from other inmates. So, again, to sit here and speculate, we don't know. Obviously, it raises a red flag, and it could also be something of whether or not his defense team thinks that there's something else at play here, that he has some sort of mental issues that could be coming up in, uh, in his defense. And the jail is not confirming that he is in the mental health ward but that is what is being reported uh, from inside Atlanta let's go to Michelle in Canada we have got callers Michelle good evening oh hello um Jean can I please ask um the panel or whomever I'm um, just wondering I think Leanna sorry Leanne she played a part in Cooper's little Cooper's death and if so what part did she play you know, that's the pivotal question right there. No, no, no question about it. Kenya Johnson, as a prosecutor, you are now waiting for the police department's investigation. You are conducting your own investigation. You're not sitting around waiting for the Cobb County Police Department to hand you over everything they have. What are you looking at? What do you want to find on this mother to see if she is criminally responsible at all? Well, definitely looking at her criminal history will tell a lot about her patterns she of behavior. She has no criminal history that we know as of. 
as well as looking at her behavioral history. Uh, that might be interviewing friends, interviewing co-workers, looking at her work history, seeing has there been any other issues in the past where she has lied, where she's been untrustworthy, where she's been reckless. And with that type of information, we can link a pattern of behavior and link it to what she may have done in this case.